Hi everyone and welcome to this video, the next in my series on writing speeches. In the last video we looked at direct address, collective pronouns and emotive language and in this one I want to teach you about using statistics, expert opinion and anecdotes to make your speeches more powerful and more interesting. So first let's begin with statistics. Statistics are number facts. They are really easily digestible pieces of information and because they are mathematical they sound convincing. For example, According to recent research, 99% of people who ate broccoli at least once a day got all A's in their leaving cert. Now, this statistics aim is to prove two points. Firstly, if it was true, I'm sure all of you would be very happy to start eating broccoli. But secondly, it's very clearly untrue and that takes away from its potential power. So when you're writing a speech or even an article or a persuasive piece, your statistics don't have to be true. If they are, brilliant. But don't worry about being accurate just worry about making them believable. The last thing you want is for your statistic, like the one here about broccoli, being so ridiculous and over the top that it actually distracts or takes away from the ideas in your piece of writing. So imagine, for example, you're giving a speech to parents and teachers at a meeting about the use of mobile phones in school. The school has decided to ban them completely, but the students disagree. Your speech, is aimed at convincing teachers and parents that they should be used sometimes for educational purposes. If you were to use a statistic such as this, 100% of students who use phones get A's, then your statistic is pointless because it's so ridiculous and unbelievable that your listeners will not pay much attention to what comes next. If you're thoughtful with it, however, you could use something like this. So research has shown that almost 80% of students who use their phones with their teacher's permission to do specific work in lessons engaged more and remembered more of what was taught. This is being used for the same reason as the other statistic, to convince teachers and parents not to ban phones in school, but it's much more believable and so it's much more effective. Statistics are convincing, as we've seen, because they are mathematical and they sound authoritative. But be careful not to overuse them and also make sure that you tell your listener where they come from. Phrases such as recent research from University College Cork or according to the Medical Council before statistics help to introduce them and give them some more credibility. Similarly, when you introduce an expert opinion or an expert speaking, you need to say where they are from and why your listener should pay attention to what it is they have to say. So pick a name in advance. You don't want to be sitting in an exam hall trying to come up with a professional sounding name. Pick a name in advance and where that expert is from and make sure that it suits your speech. So if your speech is the one that we saw a moment ago about phones in schools, then maybe your expert might come from the digital literacy department in Trinity College Dublin. If your speech is about bullying or cyberbullying, then maybe your expert might come from an educational department at the National Institute of Psychologists. Always remember to match your expert to your purpose, and it never hurts to put a title like doctor or professor before their name. So here are a couple of examples. Climate change. Recent research by Professor Sam McConkie of the European Oceans Institute shows that the seas are rising more than we initially thought. Professor McConkie said, it's clear now that something has to change. If nothing is done to reverse climate change, the world as we know it won't survive. Or social media. We all know that social media has positives and negatives, but according to Dr. Rachel Lewis, head of Ireland's Digital Literacy Task Force, the negatives outweigh the positives. Dr. Lewis said, the more research we do, the more we see that teenagers' exposure to social media is overwhelmingly negative. While there are positives, such as feeling connected to peers and feeling like they have a voice, the negatives include feeling depressed, addiction to screens and cyberbullying. Something needs to change. So there's two examples of how to incorporate an expert opinion into your writing. The last thing that we're going to look at in this video is the use of anecdotes. An anecdote is a short story or a narrative. It's different from expert opinions and statistics because there's no proof to back it up. It's simply someone's experience. And while it's important that you don't rely solely on anecdotes because they often aren't as convincing as statistics or experts, they're a great opportunity to use emotive language. A lovely way of moving between these different techniques is to give your audience some statistics on an issue first and then move into an anecdote to show them the human side of the issue. So for example, according to recent research by the Digital Literacy Task Force, 58% of young people have admitted to feeling stress and anxiety after being on social media. This is a shocking number. 
Dr. Rachel Lewis, who led the research, says that the content encountered by teens on social media can often be harmful to their self-esteem and their well-being. But behind these numbers and statistics are real people. A number of young people I've spoken to have told me firsthand of the pain and suffering that social media has caused in their lives. One girl, only 13 years of age, told me that after hours of scrolling through people's pictures and other content, she doesn't feel good enough about herself. Sometimes she can't get out of bed. Recently, she has started to harm herself. What sort of a world do we want to create for our young people? Why should we allow them to be harmed by something they carry with them every day? It's time to address the problem of social media. So I hope that you found this video useful for your own writing and in putting your speeches together. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how to put together a really strong counter argument to make your initial argument really convincing.